So I was really glad to hear the news that the coach was coming back to WWE and joining the Raw commentary team. And I have to say, so far, the early returns to me have been positive. I feel like he's added quite a bit to the commentary team. It's not nearly as bad, and it helps drown out some of the ridiculous noise from Corey Graves. So, of course, the coach had to go on Twitter and spout out some ridiculous crap. And I quote, I continue to be amazed at the venom towards Roman Reigns, and yet all fans can say is, I hate him. Not why, not how, not anything. Stop being sheep and just enjoy the show. You all read our EED social media like it's the Washington Post. I have to believe you are smarter than that. Unquote. Ugh. Why'd you have to go and say something so stupid, coach? This is just more typical WWE wrestling bubble bullshit. Where these guys speak from an elevated platform due to their national and international television exposure. And they flat out just vomit out straight hot garbage. It gets accepted by a lot of fans. The real sheep of WWE's fan base goes largely unchallenged by the wrestling media. Because they're too busy trying to suck schlob and knobs and kiss ass to try and get lousy ass interviews with the wrestlers because they have this fantasy about wanting to be wrestlers and being buddies with the wrestlers and being nice to the wrestlers and all this dumb crap that doesn't matter and ultimately blaming the fans and customers not the company the product the talent for the failure to get people over in the right way for the lack of huge massive success with a guy with a story with a push with a show whatever the case might be because ultimately blaming the fans and customers and questioning the fans and customers is smart business right. No, it's not. And, and let's think about this. Number one, many fans just don't think he's superstar material. They may see a guy that's decent to adequate in the ring, but he lacks charisma, lacks consistent mic skills, and frankly his character is just dull. I'm not the most raging Roman Reigns hater in the world, but we have to be honest about this. I feel like he's decent in the ring, and he lacks charisma, he's not consistently very good on the mic, and his character is very dull. In a lot of ways, he's a Samoan Randy Orton, and that's just the way I see it. Number two, a lot of fans see him as Cena 2.0, and they've seen enough. After over a decade of that crap, they didn't sign on to get another decade of that crap from a guy who's far worse on the mic. You're talking about a guy that's now going to get four straight WrestleMania main events, and no matter how much he's booed, no matter how much the fans that actually pay to go to the shows largely try to boo him out of the building, it just doesn't matter. They won't turn him heel due to this lame spin that they've put on things that they're not in the heel or the baby face business, they're in the reaction business. And as long as you get a reaction, that's all that matters. And that is complete hot garbage. If you go out there and you try to package and present a guy one way, I don't care if it's Roman Reigns or anybody else, and the fans gravitate to him in an entirely different way, even when you get past just some of these fans that go to these shows and they want to hijack crap because they want to play fantasy booker with what the hell's going on, but they legitimately don't go the way it's supposed to go, that's not good. That means you're sending your audience in an entirely different direction. The audience is trying to take you then in an entirely different direction. You continue to resist and it creates this whole awkward struggle that is just counterproductive. Number three, many fans resent the lack of meritocracy in WWE. And what I mean by that is similar to Cena for all those years and Orton as well to a slightly lesser degree. No matter what, they will prop up Roman Reigns at all cost. It doesn't matter how much, let's say, a Braun Strowman gets over. It does not matter how much guy A, B, C, D gets over. It just doesn't matter. Even if they got to the point where they were challenging Reigns and trying to usurp his spot on the throne, the WWE would do little shit to try and undercut him. It's what they did with CM Punk when it came to a point in time where he was more over than John Cena, he was moving more merch than John Cena, the WWE made sure that they took care of that very, very quickly. And it's ridiculous when you talk about the lack of meritocracy. 
Sometimes these arenas are half full or maybe three quarters full. But we'll still continue to prop up Roman Reigns and we won't put any of the blame on him or any of the blame on WWE itself saying we haven't done a good enough job getting this guy over enough where people actually want to pay money to see him and you will yet continue to keep him in the same damn spot. And knowing that if somebody else produced that result, they would get dropped, they would get dropped quickly like a bad habit. And number four, what's so ridiculous about this, there's pushes and there's forces. And sometimes it's tough because when you're trying to make a star, you kind of toe the line between a push and a force. You know, Cena in 2004, as he was building up to WrestleMania 21, that was a push. Randy Orton, what they did the first half of 2004 to get him ready for winning the world title against the Invisible Man at SummerSlam 2004, that was a force. That was straight force down your throat and up your ass. There's a difference. Like, you could sit there and look at the back of the wall and you could say, well, Hogan was forced down people's throats. Hogan was also the biggest star the business has ever had. Hogan drew a shit ton of money. Hogan grew the WWE into an international conglomerate. Not the same thing. If you want to talk about, well, Warrior back there, he was forced. Yes, he was. There was a reason he was forced. And still, no matter what anybody tries to say to knock him or take it away from him, he became a big star, and he was a successful WWE champion. He might not have been Hogan successful, but in the grand scheme of things, who actually was? Warrior was forced, but it worked. You look at The Rock. They tried to force him initially as this blandest of bland baby faces, and the crowd farted at it. They started chanting, die, Rocky, die. They hated him. The WWE, instead of continuing to stubbornly dig in their heels for the next 10 years, which is what they've done now with Cena and now Roman Reigns, they totally changed the script. They flipped them heel, lined it with the Nation of Domination, and they were off to the races. And The Rock ended up becoming one of the biggest stars in the history of the wrestling business, one of the truly great singular talents in wrestling of all time. But if the WWE of today had The Rock of 20 years ago, that would have never happened. Because he would have continued to be wearing whatever the hell you would call that that he used to wear. He'd have been smiling and doing all this crap. And he would have been a Jason Jordan type and the crowd was shit all over it. It's this thing of like, you saw it so many years with Cena and you literally do start to see these same elements play out with Roman Reigns. And sure, some fans get tired of the bitching about it, but it's there. You have to own up to it. You have to accept the fact that it's true. I mean, again... They've gone to such great lengths. This is going to be Roman Reigns' fourth straight WrestleMania main event. In that time, he got Lesnar at 31. He got Triple H at 32. He got Taker and was able to beat Taker at 33, where the only other guy that's ever beaten Taker in the history of WrestleMania was Brock freaking Lesnar, who, by the way, Roman Reigns is slated to face off against again at WrestleMania 34. And then on top of that, the WWE has went to the lengths of announcing Brock Lesnar for their Raw show this past Monday and then not having him come in, making it seem like he no-showed after taking the picture with Dana White and trying to position this in a way where they're really making a big deal out of Brock Lesnar potentially stiffing WWE, Brock Lesnar potentially leaving WWE for UFC, trying to go back down this awkward kind of WrestleMania 20, 2004 type of road. For why? Not to tell an interesting, compelling story, but to try and get people to not savage Roman Reigns so damn much at WrestleMania 34 because the WWE knows what's coming. That's freaking ridiculous. If you have to force the issue that much, perhaps it's energy wasted. I'm just saying, if he was that good, if he was that great, and the company's creative juices were that good and that great, they would not have to go to these lengths to continue to try and prop up Roman Reigns and continue to try and defend and justify his spot. So, so Coach, here's a couple of things for you. To say the fans don't and can't say why they hate Roman Reigns is just stupid. You got all types of people that do videos like me, people that write articles on websites. You got people that post all over social media that eloquate, whether you agree with it or like it or not, many, many reasons why they dislike Roman Reigns' character, why they hate Roman Reigns. To say that they don't or can't eloquate that or can't spell it out 
is just wrestling WWE bubble bullshit. And surely a lot of the fans that follow you didn't call you to task for it, but I'm not one of them. When I see Bull, I'm going to call out Bull. I'm going to throw the bullshit flag. And that's exactly what this deserves. You're telling people to stop being sheep and just enjoy the show. Where in reality, you are telling them to be sheep by telling them just shut up and watch the show. Again, blaming the fans, knocking the fans, trying to crap on the fans and make it their fault. No, being a sheep would be accepting whatever WWE does with Roman Reigns, no matter how ridiculous or over the top or how forced down your throats it is. Being a sheep is coming out there and saying dumb, baseless crap like people that bash on Roman Reigns, all they can say is I hate him, which is one of the most ridiculous things you could possibly say. You have years of evidence to the contrary. Again, whether you like it or not or agree with it or not does not matter. But Coach's whole fundamental premise was freaking stupid. And I understand that the guy is employed by WWE. He can't be going out and knocking one of the headline acts for WrestleMania. But it doesn't mean he has to be so damn sheepish about it. It doesn't mean that he has to be so markish about it. Because this is absolutely ridiculous. And I circle back to one fundamental point, Coach. If Roman Reigns was so great, you and others wouldn't have to go to such great lengths to defend him. You know why? Because everybody would know it. Everybody would understand it. It's that simple. People don't have to go to great lengths to defend how great The Rock was, because they know how great The Rock was. They don't have to go to great lengths to defend Sting back there, because they know how great Sting was. The Undertaker. Hogan. If you're that great, people really honestly don't have to defend you because they know. They might not like that character. They might not be a fan of it. But it's like I've always said, for me, I wasn't huge on Ric Flair back in the day. But it doesn't mean that I have to question his greatness. I know he was great. Greatest ever? Bullshit. But was he great? Was he a legend? Absolutely. Same thing with Sting. Hogan. You know, you don't have to sit there and say, was Austin great or not? You don't have to go to all these lengths to defend it because, again, everybody knows because it was so freaking obvious. And if Roman Reigns was so great and the character was so great and the WWE's creative forces behind Roman Reigns were so great, they wouldn't have to go to the lengths of trying to do some work shoot bullshit pretending Brock Lesnar was no-showing Raw in order to try and get him more sympathy after all this time. This is not just somebody that you initially are trying to sit there and get over as your top babyface. He's been in that position a few years now and still can't get the job done. I mean, for Christ's sake, you threw the rock out there a few years ago at the Royal Rumble in Philadelphia. And they booed the freaking rock. Philly booed the freaking rock. If he was so great, you wouldn't have to tweet this stuff. The WWE wouldn't have to lower the volume on the crowd mics. They wouldn't have to sit there and edit out the boos. What do you got to say about that? Exactly. You ain't got shit to say about it. And one more thing for the coach. This is where these wrestlers and people in wrestling can get really annoying sometimes. Don't question people's intelligence when you misspell read. I mean, if I came on here and called people dumb or stupid for thinking some way and then consistently uh, had poor sentence structure, uh, poor grammar usage, I would look like an idiot and I would deserve to be called to task as an idiot. You coach in this particular case even though I enjoy your work on commentary, that doesn't mean that I can't question what you said here. What you said was ridiculous. What you said was idiotic. What you said was the height, the epitome of WWE spin, pro-WWE propaganda bullshit. And again, is yet another reason why so many fans dislike Roman Reigns. If you didn't have to go to such great lengths to make him seem like he's great, maybe people wouldn't be so bad towards Roman Reigns. But more importantly, if he was that great, you wouldn't have to because everybody would know. And the reason they do is because they don't know, is because he's not great and he's just nothing more than the next WWE prop. And no matter what anybody says, they're going to do whatever the hell they want. So, hey, coach, in this case, you're absolutely full of shit.